There's an endless supply of Australian native plants that bees love to forage on. They produce nectar and pollen uh, in great amounts. So there was a whole range of plants that I could have chosen to propagate and plant out on the property. So I had to narrow that down a little bit and try and keep it in control. So I went looking on the internet in the first instance to find out what information was out there in relation to the best plants to choose. It didn't take me long and I came across the Department of Primary Industry and Regional Development website and they had a publication on there that was long out of print. It's called the Honey Plants of Western Australia Bulletin Number 3618. Uh, published by Francis G. Smith and it was printed back in 1969 so this has been around for quite some time. It's now out of print and the Department of Agriculture have generously made this copy available freely on their website so you can go to their website and download a PDF of this. Um, I was lucky enough uh, a friend actually had a copy of this so shout out to Craig who passed it on to me and I'm sure I'll get uh, a lot of use out of this book. So it outlines, first of all, uh, the different areas. It focuses on the southwest, and so it has uh, separated the Western Australian area into different zones depending on the, the plants that grow there. And so it starts off by describing which plants grow in which areas uh, and the type of soil that they like and where they will be found and the type of uh, things that they produce, whether it's nectar or pollen or both. After it outlines what grows in different areas, it then has a very useful uh, few pages where it goes through month by month to tell you what is in flower when. So that's extremely helpful uh, and which areas they grow in. And then after that, it has a one page description of each flowering plant. There's some diagrams there so it will help you to identify the plant out in the field and a brief description about uh, where it grows, what it looks like and when it comes into flower and what sort of yield you can expect to get whether it's going to be nectar, pollen or both. So that was the first uh, publication that I came across and interestingly as soon as I read the first page, uh, it gave me a clue as to another publication that I went looking for as well. After the first paragraph, he says, uh, after this was uh, planned, uh, which took five years in the making, in the meantime, the gap has been filled by Mr. R.S. Coleman's excellent checklist, Honey Flora from Western Australia, Agriculture Bulletin number 3038. So I went looking for that one as well. and. Again, the Department of Agriculture have made this available in a PDF format. And the information, there is a lot of similar information, but there's one key thing that this publication has that I was um, very excited about. And that is, uh, it produces this table, there's seven pages, and it lists so many different plants available in uh, Western Australia, not only natives, but it also lists some uh, introduced species and ones that are actually classified as uh, pests and weeds now. Uh, and it describes where you can find it uh, and some remarks about uh, what honey producers like about this plant. But the amazing thing that this also has is that it lists not only the fact that it produces honey or pollen or both, but it ranks them as well. So it gives the honey quality as either good, uh, useful or excellent. And then it actually ranks the quality of the pollen as either useful, good or poor. So from these two, and also talking to some people who have been growing native plants uh, in the Southwest, I shortlisted it down to 14 of the best. So I've made my own spreadsheet uh, of 14 that I've chosen as the most productive with excellent uh, to very good honey as well as pollen because bees need both. And 
the range of plants that I've chosen also covers across the whole 12 months. So that was one of the key things that I wanted to choose plants so the bees would have something to forage on 12 months of the year. And I think I've achieved that with the plants that I've chosen. So I'm just going to run through next uh, which of the 14 that I chose uh, and then they're the ones that I'm going to start propagating first. So number one, Eucalyptus acedens, commonly known as powder bark wandu. It's an excellent building flow, gives a good yield and bees do well on it. Takes about three years for new growth to flowering. Honey quality is excellent, the quantity is excellent and the pollen is excellent. So it gets three big ticks and it flowers from mid-January to mid-March. Number two, Eucalyptus incrustata also known as the ridge fruited or giant angular mallee, an important honey plant in South Australia. It will probably be important in WA when it is worked more by bee farmers. Quality of the honey is excellent, quantity is excellent and the pollen is excellent. So again, three big ticks and it flowers from October to December. Number three, eucalyptus platypus also known as mort. Widespread in wetter and southern Mallee areas on moist sandy loam flats and depressions. Quality of the honey is excellent, quantity is excellent and the pollen is excellent. Another one with three big ticks and that flowers from around November to January. Number four, Eucalyptus cornata, commonly known as yate. One of the first grade or choice honeys it is grown on good soils, has been almost cut out. Quality is excellent, quantity is excellent, and the pollen is described as good. And that flowers from late December through to February. Number five, Eucalyptus jacksonii, or red tingle. Only small areas exist, but it is a good producer, flowering every four years under ideal conditions. Southern rainforest on deep red loam in hilly country. Honey quality is excellent, the quantity is excellent and the pollen is good. And that flowers from January to March. Number six, Eucalyptus platycalyx or sugar gum. A heavy honey producer where there are enough trees, flowers annually, known to produce up to one CWT or 100 weight, which is 50 kilos of honey a tree each year. Honey quality is excellent, the quantity is excellent and the pollen is good. And that flowers from January to April. Number seven, Eucalyptus redunca, wandu or white gum. Trees on hills usually flower before those on the flats. The drainage system also affects the flowering times. Honey quality is excellent, quantity is excellent. However, the pollen is described as being poor. Varies according to district for its flowering, around January to February, question mark. Number eight, Eucalyptus gardneri, or blue mallet. Irregular times of flowering, the nectar produced at the end of the flowering period, gravelly laterite soils in the wetter Mallee areas in the southwest. Honey quality is excellent, the quantity is good, and the pollen is excellent. Flowering from May to September. Number nine, Eucalyptus falcata, smooth fruited mallee is the common name. Has not been worked extensively by commercial beekeepers is the comment. Honey quality is good, the honey quantity is excellent, and the pollen is good flowers from November through to December. Number 10, Eucalyptus patterns, black butt or forest black butt. An excellent builder of hives rather than a producer of honey. The honey is dark, not unpleasant, but the pollen is good. So the honey quality is described as poor, but the quantity is described as good. And importantly, the pollen is described as excellent. And that flowers January, February. Number 11, Eucalyptus leucoxylin or yellow gum. 
Now this is not a WA one, it's endemic to Victoria, South Australia and the southwest coast of New South Wales. Performs best in well-drained, moist soils, but once established is tolerant of extended dry conditions. Grows well in alkaline soils. So because this one is not a Western Australian native, it's not listed in either um, Smith or Coleman. So the ranking of the quality and the pollen is unknown. However, the quantity from other sources say that uh, it's excellent. So a lot of nectar flow there. And the important thing with this one is that it flowers around autumn and winter. Number 12, Eucalyptus robusta or swamp mahogany. Native to the east coast, grows in swampy or waterlogged soils where the water table is high, generally glow, grows on heavy clay soils. That's important if we're going to be planting these ones down along that creek line with the flooded gums. This one should do really well there. Again, uh, it's not a West Australian native, so quality of the nectar is unknown, quality of the pollen is unknown, but it has a great honey flow. So the honey quantity uh, is excellent, and that again flowers around autumn and winter, so it fills that gap for the spring flowering. Number 13. Dryandra sicilis, or parrot bush. Now this one is a bit of a left one. It's not a eucalypt. It's actually a dryandra or slash banksia. It's widespread throughout the southwest, possibly the greatest producer of honey in the state, as it is an annual producer. It seems to produce better on the coastal limestone hills. The quality is good. The quantity is excellent and the pollen is good. And that flowers from mid-July through to October. So again, winter months, which is important for the bees. Number 14. Now this one, I've thrown this in as a bit of a wild card because it is so well known. It's Manuka, Leptospermum scaparium. Found on the south coast of New South Wales, extending south through Victoria and Tasmania. In New South Wales, it grows in heath on sandstone and sandy soil and often along creek lines. That's interesting because we've got the creek running through the property. Easy to propagate from seed or cuttings. Again, no record in my publications from Coleman and Smith as to the honey quality or the pollen, but it's well documented that the um, honey is very prolific in these bushes. Uh, and it flowers over winter and spring. So again, we're covering those winter, spring months before other things come on board. So there you have it. There's the top 14 that I'm going to go with. And so now I need to get busy and start propagating and getting these in the ground. And so hopefully these 14, uh, and I'm sure I'm gonna add to these, uh, will provide the foundation for Trees for Bees WA and a year round supply of nectar and pollen for the bees so that they can just live a sedentary lifestyle and they'll never have to move again. <music> <music>